I want to show you how to draw hydraulic head contours in cross section. If these are piezometers where this is the screen right here and this is the water level in the piezometer, then what we're going to do is uh, imagine that we've got a set of piezometers here uh, with the screens at different depths here, here, and here, and here. So this would be a cluster of piezometers and we can then get the hydraulic head at different um, depths at, at this location. And we've got several clusters and we can put this information together to get a distribution of hydraulic head in cross-section and then we can use that to estimate what the flow directions are in cross-section. So here's how it's going to work. Let's take, so here's how it's going to work. If we take the elevation of the water level at this piezometer, it's 14, and that's the hydraulic head that applies to that location. So we write the hydraulic head there at the screen where the hydraulic head applies. And then we can repeat that. Um, the hydraulic head over at this piezometer is 24 and we can also say that at the water table the pressure head is zero so the hydraulic head at the water table is equal to the elevation so up here at the water table you can see following the green arrow that's the elevation that's where the water table equals an elevation of 36 and so 36 is the hydraulic head at that position along the water table. So we can do this at other locations. For example, at that screen, we can follow the, uh, follow the water level over. It's right here. We can follow that over. That looks like 32. So 32 is the head right there. Up here at the water level, at the water um, table, um, the water table is here at an elevation of 40 and down here at this lower screen the water level it's right here and so that is about 19. Okay so that's how we do it and we can go in and fill in the rest of these uh, piezometers. Okay so there we go and what we can do now is draw in the contours and so the important thing that we need to recognize is that these numbers are the heads at the screens and so we can just go and do the contouring like we would do in other circumstances and so uh, we'll only deal with the saturated zone so we can start with the water table and I'm going to start with a contour of 20 so it it starts right here at the water table and then it goes between 19 and 24 closer to 19 and so here it'll also be between 19 and 24 so it's something like that the contour for 30 would be right here at the water table it's going to come under 32 and uh, it'll be between 24 and 32 something like that so it's going to go like that and this is the divide right here uh, and so we figure that the the contour is going to come back up like that actually this one will probably do the same thing uh, because the th this is a we're assuming anyway this is going to be at the the no flow point Okay, and so let's see there's 10 20 and 30 10 would start right here and it would go right there um, something like that and then we could go and do intermediate values actually so let's see 15 would be right about there and it's gonna come come in above that above 14 something like that there's 15 25 would be right about there and come in like that and curve up and there's 36 so 35 is right below it right there and 
something something like that okay now notice I'm honoring the numbers that I that I wrote and I'm assuming that they apply to the the screen locations so let's go and finish this up uh, we've got to do a contour of five so it's going to be right here between four and six and it'll wrap around and let's see there's an elevation of five so I go over to the water table so it'll wrap around something like that and presumably um, wrap around and come back up on the other side okay so there are the contours this would be and now we can draw the uh, flow lines and what we'll do is assume that we have water that starts at the water table and we can start at a position right here and the water table is nothing significant right now it's not a contour uh, so we start off at a, a point like that and it has to cross these head contours and be perpendicular to them so we have something like this and it goes off of the off of the cross section something like that so the flow is going to look like that along this line and we could start another point right here it's got to curve around and it's got to be perpendicular so something like that I think and what I'm doing is making sure that each one of these crossings is perpendicular like that so we could have another point that comes in right here it's got to cross and be perpendicular and comes in like that and then presumably this flow line would go down below the map and then or the cross section and then come back up okay so we're assuming then the flow is like this and this is assuming of course that the uh, cross section the material here is homogeneous and isotropic okay so that's how you would go about doing a uh, set of head contours and in cross section and then inferring what the flows look like